In this workflow, we will cover the thin fault likelihood, TFL, which is an attribute that produces accurate and sharp faults. It is defined as the power of semblance and has a range between 0 and 1. It aims to capture and delineate fault and fracture in an area of interest, such that the algorithm scans the range of fault deeps to identify the maximum likelihood and produces razor-sharp fault images on horizontal slices and vertical sections. The TFL is used as input to compute the proximity and density of fracture in a given area. Though we launch the fault and fracture control center from processing, fault and fracture, or from the icon, then under attributes we select thin fault likelihood TFL and go. Specify the input cube to deep steered median filter and to speed up the process we set the volume sub-selection to 120 400 range for the inline and 350 to 600 range for the cross line and 1400 1848 for the Z range and OK. Then we select the advanced setting to view the parameters. We keep the default step out 2-2 for the inline cross line and it's recommended to have a large Z step out, in this case 32. Please make note that the uh, smoothing along the strike and deep will increase the continuity of the fault plane, but the over smoothing may also enhance the outliers. Keep the default parameters and close. We specify an output cube name, call it thin fault likelihood, and run. The process finished, we can close the progress viewer window and the TFL as well. Now we will display the thin fault likelihood on inline 200. Right click on inline as default, change the inline number to 200. Right click again on inline 200, add attribute. From store, we select the thin fault likelihood attribute and OK. For a better visualization, we change the color bar to semi-transparent, like chimney for example. Change the uh, seismic deep steered median filter to gray scale color bar and zoom in around the area where we have computed the thin fault likelihood. The vertical section shows razor sharp fault image picked by the thin fault likelihood attributes. This concludes this workflow where we show how to compute the thin fault likelihood using the fault and fracture 3D control center.